So having considered all of the uh, organelles individually without any reference to cells, I thought we'd just have a look at a couple of electron micrographs of cells in their sort of entirety. So when you see an electron micrograph of a cell, it is not always going to contain all of those organelles. So a, a cell is a three-dimensional structure like a box. If you um, know it went through the, let me just get a box, the, the box lid, you'd see one thing. If you went through the middle of the box, you know, if we went through this bit of the box, we'd be seeing this lovely notebook. And if we went through that bit, we might see this lovely notebook. And if we went through this bit, we might see a bit of our frog post-its and a bit of our pig post-its. So you're actually in an electron micrograph seeing just a layer. And the things in each layer will be different, just like it is in this box of rather nice stationery. I shall remember that. So, what you're seeing in this electron micrograph is a plant cell. Now, how do I know that? Well, partly because it says at the bottom, botany, underlying leaf JPEG. But my dead giveaways, cytoplasm pushed up to the side. This big gap here is the vacuole. And then here I've got chloroplasts with their long lines of lamellae running through them. And these large structures which happen to be starch grains. So these are chunky with starch grains. We've got these long lines of lamellae. And if I look very closely, I will be able to see a double membrane there. So this is the tonoplast running around the outside. And pretty much all I can see in this is chloroplasts and tonoplast and our cell wall, our middle lamella, and our cell wall running around the outside of the cell. So our plasma membrane is this little line running along here. If we look at an animal cell, animal cells, um, because they don't have that big central vacuole, they tend to be filled with cytoplasm and chock-a-block with cell inclusions, therefore. So this is an electron micrograph of two animal cells next to each other. So we've got a nucleus here with its double membrane with its gaps in between and another nucleus here with its double membrane and its gaps in between. It's not taken a slice through the nucleolus. That must be further down in the box or up in the box. We can see then we've got these little parallel lines that look like they've got little bubbles on them. So these are the endoplasmic reticulum and the little bobbles are ribosomes, so we're looking at rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then we've got these circles here with what appear to have little lines across them, and they're the mitochondria. So remember, cutting on an end will give you a round view. Cutting in that plane will give you a round view. Cutting in that plane would give you a, a more sausage-shaped uh, mitochondrion. In between these two cells, where it says junction here, this is the gap between the cells. So we've got a cell membrane here and a cell membrane there and a little intracellular space, a little in between the cells, sorry, intercellular space between the cells, a uh, little gap there. Just for the sake of completeness, I think, we'll just do a little bit about microvilli and again cutting things. So this again is another animal cell. Um, it appears to have some Golgi body that's remember, surrounded by these vesicles. We've not managed to get a slice through the curved cisterni. That might be a bit of a slice through a curved cisterni but perhaps at an angle rather than, than straight on. And this is the cell membrane but you can see these structures here. Now what's happened here is that the cell membrane has been thrown into folds like this and these are structures that you would come across again and again and again in biology so this is an animal cell and these little structures here are called micro because they're microscopic villi because they're little folds 
and you can see they're quite long now. The job of a fold in biology, just like for the Christie, is to increase surface area. So these are often found at exchange surfaces, your small intestine where you're absorbing um, glucose and other nutrients from your gut. They're found in the kidney where we do selective reabsorption and take the things back into the blood that we want to after filtering. Now you'll see that on this side these look like a load of little dots and that's because remember if we're cutting in this plane we're going to see a microvilli like that but if they've been sliced across they're going to look like a pile of little dots. And sometimes when you're looking at slides of things like that you can see that this is, appears to be a row of little dots and it might be because it's the brush border is sticking up like that, like lots of fingers and you've chopped off the ends of them. That's not a very nice thought, is it? It might be that sometimes you would see a microvilli and in the cell it would look like that and then there'd be some sort of lozenges there and it's just that if you imagine, it's difficult to show with a lipstick to be honest, if you imagine that the microvilli was bent but you sliced through like that and then looked at it, you're going to see the extension and then you're going to see another bit that looks like it's been it's been sliced off just in the way that it's been sectioned. When we talk about sectioning, uh, slicing um, specimens and them looking different, so for example your mitochondria looking like that or like that, we would say that they had been cut in different planes and that's plane spelt like aeroplane not like prairie planes so cut in different planes so that's quite a nice thing to remember okay